good to see you once again on this Wednesday night. We come to give God the glory. We come to give him the honor. Can you do me a favor? Can you just give God your very best praise right about now? Come on, open up your mouth and let's bring light into the atmosphere. Right where you are at home, you may be on the job, you may be in the car. But one thing for certain, we're going to bless him with all of our might, with all of our soul. Come on, let's give him glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you honor. We give you praise for our lives are in your hands. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. And say this. Oh, you say. Oh, you say. Come on, it's all about him. Somebody ought to rejoice in that. Come on and bless him if he's your 
for everything. Hallelujah. Father, we need you like never before. That's why we declare that you're my everything. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands right where you are and just begin to talk to the Father. Come on, tell him how much you need him. Tell him how much you long for him. Yes, Lord. If it wasn't for him, his grace, his love, his compassion for us. Oh, God, where would we be? Come on, let's continue to worship him. Lord, you are so amazing. Strong and mighty. Lord, you are yes, Lord. Lord, you are full of mercy. Lord, you are yes, Lord. And Lord, your name above all others. When my life would be without you, I know I would be hopeless. I'm a wretch and I'm without you, Lord. You are so.
what my life would be without you. Help me say, I know. I know I would be homeless. I'm a wretch without you. Just lift those hands and just begin to speak well of him. Can't be without you. Won't last without you. prayer that night. Come on, say. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. I need you. Every hour. I need you. Every second. I need you. Every minute. I need you. I need thee. Oh, I need you. I need thee. Oh, I need you. Throughout my journey. the presence of the Lord in this place. I'm certain that you're experiencing what we are here. Something about praising the Lord, something about worshiping him. He always takes notice, those pure hearts, and he comes and he displays his glory in the midst of those who look to him, whose focus is him, whose worship is all for him. I need him. I need him. That's that's my heart. That speaks the sentiments of my heart perfectly. I need him. In fact, I desperately need him. I can't live without him. Don't even want to try. Uh, I think we've all tried it some way or another in the past, but I don't ever want to make that mistake. Don't ever want to do that again. I need him. We need him. Revival fire is already burning in this place. I expect, and this is my prayer, that God will just continue to show himself strong on our behalf this evening. We have prayed, I have been praying, trusting that God will meet us here today and God will do exploits in our midst, wonderful things, uh, signs, wonders, miracles. We want you, Lord, to have your way in this place. We welcome you. That's it. Come on, just put it there in the chat. Say it wherever you are. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. It's not about me. It's not about these. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Not unto us, but to your name be all the glory and all the praise. Psalm 47 and 1 says, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. If you are in a place where you can do that, we'll do it here. You do it right where you are. Come on. Open your mouth and just give them praise as you clap those hands. Come on. While you're clapping the hands, you're making a statement. Come on, let it be appropriate of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Listen, if this is your first time with us tonight, you're an honored guest. We're glad to have you in this virtual setting. Trust that you will join us in person. Currently, we are doing in-person services. Well, just one service on Sunday morning. Uh, at, at this point, we'll let you know in the near future when the 11 a.m. service will resume. But right now, 9 a.m., we'd love to have you to come and be a part of our in-person services. You're here tonight. You're an honored guest. Please take a moment and text first time to 797979. As soon as you do that, we're going to send something out to you from our heart to yours. We've got some good news. We're just getting good and started. So we're going to continue with the worship during this time of our service. We have what we call our agape hug time. Got to do it virtually today. So I'm asking you, be generous. Greet one another. Share some love. And hey, by the way, help me out. Uh, give a happy birthday shout out for Brother Don back here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Happy birthday to you, man. I think it was yesterday or two days ago. But uh, hey, 
what a, what a great, 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 great brother there. He, he got, his, got his hat on and his scarf on like it's cold. Well, it is cold. Um, but we love you, Don, and we thank you for your support of ministry. And he's got an amazing voice and a great spirit. Greet one another. And happy birthday to any of you who are out there, because if you couldn't be born in March, November's an okay month. Uh, it's a good month, too, okay? Happy birthday to all of you. I'll be right back. Amen. We just gonna take it back. If you know without a shadow of a doubt that you made it out all right and you're grateful for it, come on, I just need you to make some noise right there in your home. Come on, put your hands on it. We're gonna sing it like a big church choir. Y'all ready?
somebody need to put it in the comment section there. Uh, I made it, I made it. Come on, testify, testify to one another. Live a witness. Uh, I made it, 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 I made it. Maybe you're in the thick of it right now, but you make it your confession of faith. I made it, I made it. That shall be my testimony. I expect it, I believe it. I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Enemy sent it to kill you, to destroy you. But you're going to live and not die and declare the wonderful works of the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Sound good, sound good, sound good, sound good. Good, sound good, sound good. Make me want to park right there, but we need to keep moving a little bit here. Uh, man, that, that, that's a great, great song. It's, great. it's my testimony, and I know it's their testimony because you can't sing it like that, and that doesn't connect with your spirit. Some folk can sing a song, and it's a nice song, but it's wonderful when you have the experience. So I'm, I'm singing from a particular perspective. I know what it's like to have my back up against the wall. I know what it's like to have the enemy uh, in, in, in his best attempt to try to take me down and destroy me. But when God intervenes, God steps in, God turns the situation around, God makes the things that are working against you work for you. When you see Isaiah 54 and 17, not just as a verse you quote, but you experience it, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment you shall condemn. And man, you can sing that song with conviction. I made it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I encourage you, for those of you who may be in the midst right now, and, and uh, oh, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Stop saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I'm going to tell you how you're going to make it. God's going to get you through it. That's how you're going to make it. Leave the details up to him. Keep your eyes on him. And He, he <laughs> many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. That word in the Hebrew delivers is a word that means to snatch up out and away. Uh, there's an expiration date on every test and every trial. And so right when it seemed like this might be it, I'm going down for the count, God will snatch you up out and away from it so that you will have that song. And I got some good news for you and some good advice for you. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Sing now. Declare it now. Come on, come on. Declare it. I made 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 it. Come on, let the house hear you shouting. I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. Let the neighbors hear you. I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. I'm not going on. Glory be to God. Well, um, I, I, I want to take a moment um, uh, before leading us in the worship of giving to say thank you. Thanks a zillion to each of you uh, that uh, blessed me on uh, Sunday with, and, and throughout uh, the month for Pastor's Appreciation Month. I appreciate your kindness, your prayers, the encouragement, the cards that I received, and the gifts that you gave me. Uh, I appreciate it so much. I'm going to say it again probably a few times so I can try to get everybody. But thanks a zillion. I really appreciate it. And I'm praying that God will return everything back to you. And I pray even more 100-fold. It's time for us to worship the Lord in giving now. And I want to share with you a principle of Scripture that we all should practice. The first of which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 16. And I'm going to read two verses for you. Verse 16 and 17 says, no one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift proportionate to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Note, everybody should come before the Lord with something in hand. You might th say, well, I don't have anything. If you're a sower, um, God's going to make certain that you have something to sow. He gives seed to the sower. Perhaps it's not been your practice in past times and you need to change your practice and get into the habit of giving to the Lord. He'll allow you to find something on the way to church or, 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 or liquidate something so that you will have something in hand to bring before the Lord. That's an Old Testament passage, but it, the theme of it, the, the principle of it continues throughout Scripture. And there's this 
very familiar text that is on the screen there for you now. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. That's the promise of God. If you come before him with something in hand, what you have in hand might not be as far as quantity is concerned as much as you'd like to be able to give to him, but make certain the quality is of such that it is your best. And when you do that, God obligates himself to bless you, to give you abundance so that not only are your needs met, but that you'll have surplus so that you can help uh, and, and you can contribute to other good works to advance the cause of Christ and his kingdom. We're going to worship the Lord now and give and do it with the same enthusiasm, the same excitement uh, that uh, you, you, you just had in singing, I made it. Give as unto the Lord as an act of worship and as an act of genuine faith. Trust him in doing this. Give cheerfully, give generously, not grudgingly, cheerfully and generously, and God will bless you in the same measure in which you give. It will be returned back to you, and I pray 100-fold. I'll be right back as this is worship. We're going to worship the Lord now in giving. Thank you, Lord. How many know that our God is amazing? If you know that, just put that in that chat section there. Come on, let's just agree in the Lord. Let's agree and be on one accord that our God is amazing. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, yes. Amazing are you, Lord. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Come on, say, you're amazing. You're amazing. So amazing. So amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. So amazing. So amazing. You cause the sun, the sun and moon to shine. I'm so glad you're mine. Oh, I'm mine see you're amazing you're amazing you're amazing so amazing you're amazing you're amazing you're amazing so amazing you cause the sun the sun and moon to shine
serve an amazing God. Come on and just give him an amazing praise. Give him, a, give him offer up for worship to the Savior. Hallelujah. Truly he is amazing. Uh, what a, a, another powerful song and, and a great declaration. I've said this for years and just feel impressed to say it again. Perhaps this is your first time hearing me say it. But stop telling God how big your problems are. Instead, tell your problems how big and how amazing your God is. Put it in perspective. He's an amazing God. He's a great God. He's greater than anything and anyone. He can handle whatever comes your way. Just have faith and trust him. Let's take our seed and lift it up before the Lord our Father. From your hand, we receive the seed that we now release back into your hand. We dare not come before you empty-handed. We'll put the principle in practice, looking to you always to supply seed for which we may sow. And with it, we give purposefully, we give generously, we give cheerfully. And we stand on your word and know that you're going to honor it and you're going to cause the multiplication of the seed to be made manifest in our life a great harvest so that the cycle can continue seed time and harvest it's in jesus name we give amen amen thank you in advance and i encourage you to look for the lord to open up doors that no man can shut on your behalf i want to share briefly with you tonight and i'd like you to join me in romans chapter 15 in romans chapter 15 on this uh, Revival Fire Night. We've been taking now, uh, oh, it's been so so many, many weeks, most of the year uh, we have been here because God said to continue, and that's what I'm doing. I've learned a long time ago the best way is the Lord's way. Now, there are many options, there are many ways, but his is the best way to do what the Lord calls us to do, and at first you might not see it, um, but uh, you just got to keep at it with consistency. There is power in consistency, that is, in doing the right thing. And so we're getting this message out. We're encouraging you. We're praying. We've been doing it in our morning prayer calls as well, crying out for revival, revival fire. I want to share with you from one verse of Scripture in Romans chapter 15, 13. I'll cite other Scriptures, but this is a Scripture I want you to focus in on and meditate uh, on tonight and even throughout the week. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to speak to you from this this topic today keep hope alive keep hope alive remember hearing that as a child i think at first from the reverend jesse jackson uh, as it relates to to the struggle and and the fight for civil rights keep hope alive and i felt impressed to use it as a title to encourage you believer in christ believer in the word to keep hope alive for hope is powerful. I want you to know, as I've said uh, often, that biblical hope is different from the world's concept of hope. The world often, when you hear the expression hope, uh, they're, they're thinking wishful or, or, or they're, 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 they're saying wishful thinking. And that's not hope in the biblical sense when when you hear some people say I, I, I'm, I'm hoping and praying a lot of times what they mean is I'm wishing and I'm praying but that's not really what we're called to do we're called to have a, 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 a biblical perspective of hope and that is uh, of confident expectation. So the first point I want to make with regards to hope is that hope is a favorable and confident expectation of something good. A favorable and confident expectation of something good. You just know 
somehow, some way, something good is going to manifest. The lack of hope is one of the saddest things in our world today, one of the saddest conditions of humankind. Depression is often because of hopelessness in the mind of individuals. And so therefore, depression is often referred to as a manifestation of hopelessness. I want to encourage you tonight and in the days to come that you uh, grab hold of hope and uh, don't let it go. Don't let it die. Keep hope alive. I want you to challenge yourself when you wake up in the morning, wake up with a new attitude. Wake up with great expectations of favorable things to come. And so instead of uh, waking up uh, hopeless uh, uh, and, and, and or a hope that is dead, turn that situation around and, and make it come to life in your life. Believe it. Stand on it. Expect God to do great and mighty things. Don't allow fear to control your life one moment more. Make it a decision. If you got to write it down, if you got to put it in your phone, that when you wake up in the morning, I, I don't care what the, the, uh, the outlook for the day may be as far as meetings that you have to have, challenges that, uh, that are, are, are still before you. Be hopeful. Have confident expectation that fa something favorable is going to come out of this. Believe God just the same. Our facial expressions often give us away. I look at people often, and I'll see them sometimes. They'll go through the motion, and they'll, they'll give you the right words, but their body language and their facial expressions don't match. Put a smile on your face. Make yourself smile. Uh, it adds to your face value. Make yourself smile. Don't, let, uh, uh, don't, don't give the enemy uh, any opportunity to use against you. And you may not feel like smiling. I don't always feel like smiling, but I make myself smile when I don't. I, I was encouraging somebody uh, even uh, recently. Uh, they're going through, a, a, you know, a sad season in life. And I just encouraged them. I encouraged them with the word. And then I told them, I said, look, I said, um, this may not be the most spiritual thing to do, but um, I, it does have a spiritual uh, 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 basis. That is, a merry heart does good like medicine. So I said, look, tonight, here's what I want you to do. Just sit down and watch White Chicks. That is one of, in my opinion, one of the funniest movies. And I said, that'll put a smile on your face. And he promised that he was going to do it. Uh, let me move on. Let me get back to my, uh, <laughs> my text there. Somebody's waiting for the service to end now, so you can, you can, you can watch it. <laughs> the next point I want to make is that hope is the full manifestation of the life each believer already possesses. It's the resurrection life. You and I have hope in us, uh, Christ in us, the hope of glory. In fact, Everything that's needed, everything necessary, everything that's essential to your uh, uh, health and welfare and salvation um, uh, beyond just you being converted or becoming a new creature, uh, creature in Christ Jesus is that God has imparted everything that you need. You are wired for success. You are wired for victory and triumph. And so though it might seem like you're in a difficult place right now, look beyond that place place and have hope. Keep it alive that, yeah, it might be difficult right now. Things really are, are, are challenging me uh, every, every moment of every minute of every day, but I'm going to look beyond the moment and I'm going to see that things are going to turn around favorably for me. The third thing I want to encourage you with today is that uh, hope is not meant to stand alone. It must be coupled with faith. It must be coupled with faith. And so what I mean by that is, and, and, and many of you are already thinking of the text in Hebrews chapter 11 and 1, it says, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. That's the New King James Version. I want to read it to you from the Amplified. And it says, now faith is the assurance, that is the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, uh, faith perceiving as real fact what is not yet revealed to the senses. And so faith, faith in God is the substance 
of things that are hoped for, the things that are confidently expected. And so then hope joined with faith brings things into their reality in God's appointed time. So don't you dare give up. Have faith in God. Now, the right to expect uh, comes from doing God's word. Faith uh, without works is dead. And so you can say you have all the faith in the world, but if you're not doing what the word says to do, then it's really going to make your expectation null and void. God expects you and I to cooperate with him. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. You might say, Lord, I, I want to be healed. I, I, I've got high blood pressure. But you insist on eating a poor diet. And you're wanting God to just do a magic trick and just lower your blood pressure. No, you got to work with him and change your diet. Bacon uh, may not be your thing right now in this season in your, uh, in your life. Don't you want to live? Well, cooperate with God. And if you say you have faith to believe God to heal you, then work with him. Do your part. And, of course, he'll do his part. And... The uh, final point that I want to make today is faith and hope facilitate blessings. Romans 5 and 5 lets us know that faith does not, or hope rather, does not disappoint. So when you couple your faith and your hope, uh, your hope together, it's going to produce results. It's going to produce blessings in your life. And so I encourage you, change your mindset, change your perspective, change your practice, change your habit. Uh, uh, cast not away your confidence, your hope in God. What you have need of is patience, according to Hebrews 10 and 35. Be patient. All things are going to work out. Be patient. God's going to make good on his word. He not only makes promises, but he keeps promises. And so stop uh, cheating yourself or talking yourself out of your blessing. Consider the things that you're allowing to come out of your mouth. If it's not the right thing, check your heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth thinks. It, the mouth speaks, rather. So we need to think right. We need to have it in our heart. It needs to be in our mind. And then from that place, it will come out. Make certain that your confession of faith is that indeed, that you're not wavering, that you're not uh, straddling the fence. Speak the word of God. If you're believing God for a job, then believe him for it. Ask him for it. And you don't have to beg for that job. Believe God for it. Do what you need to do as far as looking for that job and thank him every day until it manifests. Maybe you've got some issues going on in the home and, and, and there's a, a, a conflict and tension like you've not known before. Well, don't give up. Keep hope alive. God can turn that situation around. If God could uh, bring deliverance to Israel time and time again, even when they were outnumbered, surely he can handle what's in, what you're dealing with in your home right now. If God could feed 5,000 men besides women and children with two fish and five loaves of bread, surely he can do something about your marriage. If God uh, could raise Lazarus from the dead, and he did, then certainly he could bring resurrection power into your circumstance. Keep hope alive. Don't let hope die. Reactivate. Stir up the gift of God that's in you. That hope that has been given to you as a gift. Couple it with faith and believe God. Let it be your conviction. Let it be your confession. And then it will become your testimony. I want to pray for each of you today in Jesus' name. First, to those of you who have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I appeal to you tonight. Receive Jesus Christ. He is the hope for the world. He's the hope of salvation. He's the hope of healing. He's the hope of deliverance. He's the hope of peace. He's the hope of liberty. I give you Jesus. If you believe on him today, you will be saved. For as the scripture says, if we believe in our heart that God rose, raised Jesus from the dead and confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, we'll be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, Romans 10 and 13 says, they shall be saved. So I encourage you, maybe you're a backslider. Come on home. Stop, stop being misaligned and out there doing your own thing. Come on, the Father's arms are open to receive you. Just come to him. Let me lead you in prayer. Say, dear God, I repent of my sins. I come to you in Jesus' name, the risen Lord, and confess 
that you are Lord. Now be my Lord. Save me. Deliver me. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me this hope that remains secure as an anchor. And change my life so that not only will I recognize the change, but everybody who knows me will recognize as well that there has been a great change in me. And I thank you for hearing my prayer. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for receiving me. And I vow this night to live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed with me, I want you to see the note there on the screen and take a moment right now and text agape to 797979. We want to rejoice with you and uh, we want to pray for you, be here for you to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So you go ahead and do that and then you can join in with the prayer here for all of us. I want you to just, wherever you are, just lift up your hands in the presence of Almighty God. You might be uh, in that place of hopelessness and you really needed this word, this word to encourage you to lift up your spirit today. Hopelessness, you are rebuked in Jesus' name. Cast out now from the hearts and the minds of these, the people of God. I thank you, Father, for that hope that we have in Christ that never fails. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Yeah, my hope is built on Christ. And I thank you that he is a sure foundation. I thank you, Father, for giving those hope in the midst of their most difficult situations. Someone has experienced loss and someone has lost a job. Someone may have lost a family member so near and dear to them. And someone may have lost a, a means of, uh, of support, financial support or, or some other support. And some have been given uh, a, a terrible report, a bad report from a physician saying there's nothing we can do. But I thank you for hope, for a confident expectation. And we will declare, as the psalmist did, we will remain confident in this. We shall, we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalmist said, I would have fainted. Uh, I would have lost heart. But I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so, Father, we declare we're believers today. We will, uh, we will I pray uh, tonight, every one of us, Father, in moving forward, we will cultivate this hope that's in us and we will activate it and we'll not allow negative confessions to come forth out of our mouth ever again. We'll put ourselves in check. We'll not be double-minded. We'll not straddle the fence. We believe you, Father. And so we couple our hope with faith. We declare we believe you. And even though there may be a delay in what it is that we're believing for, we will not allow ourselves to be disappointed or frustrated because the word says hope does not disappoint. It maketh not a shame. Your, that hope that we have in you will come to its full expression and there shall be a performance of those things spoken by the Lord. I pray open doors, Father, for those who are in need of open doors, those who need a breakthrough, those who need a miracle, those who need healing in their body. If you need healing in your body tonight, I want you to lay your hand on that area of your body where you may be sick and suffering and in pain. And in the name of Jesus, God heal you. To that individual, if you've got something going on here in, with your throat, and uh, I, I, it, it, it's significant, it's serious, but God can heal it and God can deliver you from it. There's nothing so serious that he cannot handle. Uh, he, he is not at all um, uh, anxious about anything. Just give it to him. Lay your hand on that throat area. Now in the name of Jesus, we speak healing, the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. You wouldn't point it out, Father, and not do something about it. I thank you for bringing healing to every individual from the crown of each head to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus, for that individual that you've been suffering with your a respiratory problem, just begin to take deep breaths in Jesus' name. God heal you and God deliver you and set you completely free. There's someone... Uh, you know, you're having trouble doing doing this. It's kind of like your arm locks. Uh, just begin to stretch out 
your arm in the name of Jesus. Stretch it out in the name of Jesus. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. And, 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 and I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever that condition is, uh, that it ceases tonight, that you're able to move about without hindrance. That's it. That's it. Just keep doing it. Just get, and then as I'm doing, just wave in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thank you, Father, for your healing touch. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing touch. He's got healing in his wings, y'all. He sent forth his word to heal you today on this revival fire night. Be healed in Jesus' name. And for those of you who are dealing with addictions, maybe it's cigarettes, maybe it's alcohol, uh, may, maybe it's a, a addiction to pornography, whatever it is, God, break that addiction right now. I come against that, 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 that thing in Jesus' name. And by the anointing of God, we remove this burden and destroy this yoke so that what's been a struggle will not be the struggle it's been, that you are free. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Father. They've been crying out to you for deliverance. And tonight is the night that they receive deliverance in its fullness. And I thank you, Father, for removing the taste and the desire from them. Oh, you foul, tormenting spirit, we, we bind you in Jesus' name. Leave the mind, you vexing spirit, you oppressive spirit. Go in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for freedom. I thank you for liberty. Come on, right where you are, give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Hallelujah, that's it. Even in your praise, even in your praise, there is deliverance. And we bless you, our Father. And we glorify you, God. Come on, deliverance is in the room. And I know it's not lingering here. It's not here alone. It's reaching you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Be delivered. Be healed. Be set completely free. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to hear your testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. I want you to be engaged. Some of you are doing it now. Come on, you repeat the saying, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Encourage your brothers and sisters. Stand with them in agreement. We thank you tonight, Lord, for a glorious outpouring. Thank you tonight for many testimonies of your healing and your delivering power. We thank you and we praise you for it. That's it, Lord. Continue your good work. Somebody might even see this uh, af after it's aired. And I thank you, Father, that the anointing of the Spirit of God will yet be strong on this recording. And people's lives will be changed. And and not only in America, but in the nations of the world. And so, yes, Lord, let it go viral. In the name of death, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. I declare it. I declare it. The Lord rebuke you, death. We'll not die before our time. We will live, and we will live the abundant life. Come on, don't you forget that from last week. God wants you to live. Live, 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 live. Come on, speak it in your house again. Live, live, live. I'm not going to die before my time. I'm not going to die here in this place. I'm not going to die in this situation. I'm going to live, 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 live. Hallelujah. Psalm 5 and 12, and he blesses the righteous and surrounds them with favor as a shield. I pray the rest of this week be a most favorable one for you. That God opened these doors, that you recognize it was him and him alone. That God give you that which you don't even deserve. That God provide for you what others would say you're unqualified to receive. But God granted to you debt elimination, not just reduction, but elimination to these who are in great need. And I thank you and praise you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. God bless you, every one of you. Join me on the prayer call this morning, uh, Thursday morning rather, and Friday we'll continue. We're teaching prayer insights that will help you greatly and help you grow in your spiritual prayer walk. Furthermore, Sunday morning, we don't have to register any longer, but we're asking you to check in in advance. That will save time for you and for us. We're still doing temperature checks, so get here early so you can get your temperature checked. And if you fail to... Uh, check in online we'll have the check-in available for you here but help us with the process it'll take just a moment for you to do that and we'd love to see you on this sunday morning at 9 a.m shalom my brothers and sisters shalom
will be all right. Yeah.